Hey guys, Shane here with Tech Talk Tuesday and today with episode number five we'll be looking at how to tune your ESC correctly. We'll be doing the throttle endpoints and calibration as well as braking and endpoints and calibration and to get started we're going to get started over here on my B5 mid-mounted edition. It is in fact the same car as what I did a um, mid-mount conversion to the R uh, B5 RC10. Um, that was a rear um, motor car that we saw in the previous couple of videos. So if you want to know how to do the conversion, shoot me a comment down below. I'll tell you how to get it to mid or how to get it from mid to rear if you prefer to do it the other way. I'll also talk about in the next couple of videos the benefits of those setup changes, etc. with regards to shock oil, differentials, mid-mount motors and rear-mount motors as well. I'll be covering a couple of little topics there for you. But for today, we'll be talking about how to program your throttle endpoints correctly for your ESC. So the first thing that I want to point out is that I do get a number of phone calls every day about this is how do I program my throttle endpoints and why do people ask every day number one if you don't uh, program your throttle endpoints correctly you have a sporadic ESC you can have ESC's overheating you can have throttle turn on and off midway through throttle you can have brakes not work um, you can have all sorts of features fail as well you can also have heat from from your motor as well as from your ESC these can all be caused by incorrect calibration so it is incredibly important that we calibrate our ESC's and I did bring for us today the McLaren Max Pro ESC the 160 amp ESC from McLaren that's out right now as their latest and greatest for their 10 scale races and then I also brought a much simpler system which was my previous system over here to show you a contrast between the two systems and I just wanted to point out that each and every single ESC is going to be different guys so the very important thing for you all to note is that before you give us a ring that when you look at the ESC you just want to make sure that you have read through the manual already now of course when it comes to ESCs just like any other bit of electronics often there are bits and bumps that maybe are not quite as easily explained in text or in videos what we're doing right here so for that particular case do give us a call on 1-800-705-2215 or give us a chat or an email we'll be happy to help you guys out but for the purpose of today's video we'll be just be looking at this McLaren Max Pro ESC this one right over here so I have the manual for that one over here and I'll also be looking at the um, Hobby wing just stock and I have the manual for this one over here. First thing I wanted to point out is in these manuals there is an incredibly large amount of information to consume and quite normally, um, quite honestly, normally you don't need to read all of that but we do need one very important little bit and as you can see through all of that information the only bit that we need is right over here and this tells us how to get our ESC into calibration mode, it also tells us how to calibrate our ESC. Alright so in this case with the McLaren Max Pro ESC I've got everything wired up already to my receiver, to my battery. As I said, I don't have an on-off switch. This particular ESC wants us to go full break on the input when it is turned on and this will tell it that it goes into a program mode. Now this is because McLaren have opted to go with a smooth, slim, lightweight design where my on-off switch is removable to save weight and also where there are no additional buttons, where there are no additional parts also again just to save weight. So it's very different from the just stock ESC that we'll see in a second that actually has a button. I call this an active ESC calibration while this is, 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 is a passive and I'll show you why in just a second. So let's begin over here. The first thing that we want to do is turn our transmitter on for the McLaren ESC. It's going to want to receive a full break input upon being turned on and that will put it into calibration mode. I'll go very quickly through this one as this is an active calibration and I'll show you what I'm doing as well. So let me go ahead and hit full break over there. We will then go to turn on the ESC. We will get a tone. We will receive another tone. We will then go full throttle with a blue light. We will receive a tone and then we will go neutral and we will again receive a tone. Alright, give it a second for the ESC to reboot and very shortly you will see right after that that we were in fact ready to fire. There we go. So let's turn this one off so that you can hear me a little bit better. There we go. That hyper fan from McLaren really does work to keep my ESC very cool. So uh, if you want to get a really good fan, that's a good one to go with. So as you can see over there, we just calibrated that ESC very quickly and we went right through it. And why was it so quick? I didn't press any buttons. I didn't do anything. I literally just picked up the transmitter. That is it. That is all. I call this an active ESC. Why do I call it an active ESC? You put it into calibration mode and then it asks you for brake, throttle, and neutral. We didn't have to touch anything at all 
on the ESC itself. And that's why I call it an active calibration. It will go into calibrate mode by holding full brake. It will then ask you for full brake. It will then give you a, a, um, a beep to let you know that it has um, accepted that value. The LED also changed color to blue, at which point I went full throttle. It then gave me a beep and the LED changed color again, at which point I knew to go to neutral. It then gave me a beep and the LED changed color again, at which point I heard the complete um, set of beeps right after that, which then told me that the ESC is completed with its calibration. The ESC now knows when I'm pushing full brake as well as full throttle exactly where I am in that arc, and that is going to give me the best control of that system. So that is an active system. Let's look at a passive system. So this is my previous system over here, as you can see, rather dirty from when I pulled it out of the car. Please do excuse that. And I do have it wired up just like you would have in the car. And this is why my receiver was loose from this vehicle over here, is because I'm actually going to be using it. Um, there we go, let me just pull this out in the same system over here so we don't have to go through the bind procedure again. So in this particular instance to do a throttle calibration you do not need to have your servo plugged in. So do note that, that is a, um, it does make it a little bit easier knowing these little bits and bobs. So I'm just going to plug it straight into the throttle channel just like we did before. And this over here you can see from the battery to the ESC to the receiver and then from the ESC also over to the motor. Everything is set up just like you would have it in the car. The only one big difference that we have here with this particular ESC system is that on the on off switch you'll notice that there's an on off switch and there's also a little red button over here to the side. Let me hold it up a little bit closer so you can all see that a little bit better. There is the on off switch right over here and there is the little red button right over here to that side of my finger, you'll see it just over here. All right, so this is what we're gonna do is a, um, what we call, let me get this in a nice configuration so you guys can all see a little bit better. There we go. And this is what we're going to call a, um, an active calibration. And what that means is for this particular case over here, you can have your, uh, your transmitter on or off. The transmitter is only going to be setting the points in this case, but we're going to be using the ESC's button, the red button over here, to put it into its correct modes. And for this particular ESC in the manual, which I've already read, it does say that we need to press and hold this button whilst turning it on. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. As you can see, our ESC is now in setting mode. It is busy booting up. It is now in setting mode. So the first thing that it says over here it tells us how to get into that set mode over there. And then it tells us we need to move the throttle stick to the neutral position. So let's go ahead. We'll keep it in the neutral position. We will now find that little button over there and we will press the button once. Then it says we need to go to full throttle position. So we go to full throttle position. We'll then press the button once. We will then go to full brake position and we will press the button once. EC calibration should now be complete and this system should now be ready to fire. Normally what you do is you go ahead and you turn the uh, receiver off, you turn your transmitter off, you turn your transmitter back on again, wait for it to boot up and you turn your transmitter back on again. And in just a second over here we should be ready to fire. There we go. So very simply put guys, um, this being an active system, the reason why I call it an active system, I had to actively press a button every time that I set an endpoint. And that's why I call it an active system. And then the passive system do go through by a series of beeps as well as LEDs. They tell you as to exactly which point you are in your, th your throttle calibration. Now extremely, extremely, extremely important guys that you do please read that manual because if you don't, what's going to happen is you can set your brake point as throttle, you can set your throttle as brake point, you can set your neutral as full throttle and you're going to have either a sporadic ESC or motor or you could possibly even pop your ESC or your motor because of incorrect use or incorrect current suddenly going to the motor from the battery because the throttle points were not set correctly. So do make sure guys that you do check those out if you need any help, like I said, with that very basic active system or a more advanced passive system, please give us a call. Each and every single ESC system is going to be different, so make sure that you do read through the manual, guys. If you need any help, please do give us a ring on 1-800-705-2215. Give us a call, give us a chat, give us an email. Please, guys, also down below, give us a like, share if you like the video as well. Tell your, tell your friends about it if you like to see the video as well. And again, I invite you all for comments down below also to let me know what you'd like to see in the next videos to come up. In the next couple of videos, I will be talking about... Um, setup changes as to um, shock and differential oils. I would also like to cover servos as a lot of you have asked about servos. So we'll be talking about cordless servos, brushless servos, brushed servos, cord servos, what's better, what's not.
who's who in the zoo and how you can get the best from your RC equipment. So guys, again, like, share, comment down below. My name's Shane here from Amen. Very happy to be here with you for Tech Talk Tuesday, episode number five. Signing off. You have a lovely day. We'll see you next time.